Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Dickie. We appreciate you coming back for another one of our weekly tech videos. If you've landed on this video, you might have some questions about internal and external balance small block Chevys. Now, I realize that the information we're gonna be providing here to most would find basic, but the thing is, you always gotta cover the basics and you always need something to help remind you of that, help you learn a little bit. And it's all right if you don't know this stuff, we're here to help from the most simple stuff all the way up to some of our supercharged big blocks. We're here for every step of the way. Now, Chevrolet Performance still makes crate engines that are two-piece remain seal and one-piece remain seal. And there is a connecting factor there. The two-piece remain seal was an internally balanced engine. The one-piece remain seal on production engines was an externally balanced, but kind of not. And that's where a lot of confusion comes, and I'm sure that's why you're watching this. So follow along. I'm going to cover some bits. I got some visual aids here to help, and this is how it goes. If you have a two-piece remain seal, production 327 or 350 that they made forever, your flex plate or flywheel will look like this. This is a 153 tooth, very simple little flex plate. This is a GM actual part we grabbed off the shelf here. And as you can see, there is no weight welded on here. This is an internally balanced uh, flex plate. So the crankshaft has been balanced for the rotating assembly and it does not need a weight on either the balancer or the flex plate to make up for that. They did change this when they went to a one piece remain seal. And that's what you'll see right here. This is another 153 tooth flex plate. Your flywood looked like the same on the back. There's a weight you can see where this has been welded on. And that's what you need to know if you're going from one to the other. We do have some people that have a, you know, um, an old Chevelle for instance, came with a 350 and they're wanting to put in, you know, one of the Vortec 350 craters, it's a real popular mod. We, we sell them all the time like that. One of the things you need to know is that this flex plate, the internal balance flex plate that you used to have on like a 70 small block Chevy will not work on any 86 and newer one piece remain seal production style small block. Not only would the balance be wrong, but it's hard to see in this video. I hope you can, because I can see it pretty well close up, but the actual bolt pattern on the crankshaft here, these six bolts, is different as well as the real small hole. See where my thumbs are here? That hole is how it centers up on that crankshaft. It's how it you know, aligns itself. It is a different bore as well. So you won't be able to swap them. And that's, that's actually for good reason. They don't want you mixing this up. If you get the balance wrong, you can do damage. But GM made it to where you can't really swap these up. So that's a good thing. Where we get a lot of confusion on this though, is when it comes to the balancer. Now this is an eight inch Chevrolet performance balancer. You can see this on the SP357, 385, the 383s. And as you can see here, there's no weight on this one, but they do make it where you can add a weight right here. Now, on the nose end of the crankshaft, the balancer end, on the production engines, whether it was two piece or one piece, it is just the neutral balance balancer. That's where a lot of confusion comes in. Customers get confused. They say, well, wait a minute. I, I have a one piece remain seal. It's the external balance kind. Don't I need an external balance balancer? It's the balancer. No, on the production engines, it's actually a neutral balancer on the front. And this is where you can cause some trouble. The balancers between one piece and two piece remain seal style small blocks, you're 85 and older, 86 and up, they are interchangeable. So you can actually put one on the other and get that wrong. So that's a good thing to know too. Now that I've discussed some of the production engine, you know, the, the differences between the two gen, you know, generations of gen one small block, there are some special circumstances you need to know about. For instance, a 383, the stroker, everybody put, you know, the 400 crank in a 350 small block and they got that 383. Great for torque, great for performance. Chevrolet Performance sells a few versions of it. They make great power. They were externally balanced as well, but they're externally balanced on the flex plate side and on the balancer side. There's a few reasons for that, mostly because of that larger stroke. It really needs help balancing the assembly. You can't sometimes get it all on the bob weight of the crankshaft. You have to get it in these two items here. So that one will have a external balanced flex plate and an external balanced balancer. And it is this same balancer. There's these two holes at the top here. You can't see it, but they're threaded where you can put a bolt through them. And when they have it, 
they have a weight that bolts in here. Some of you might know exactly what I'm talking about. You might have seen a few pictures of it. Again, that is very important to know when it comes to getting this right. If you're ever swapping these engines around or swapping parts, you got to make sure to get this stuff right. The flex plates and flywheels can't really be interchanged, but the balancers can, and you can cause damage. They'll wipe out main bearings over time, especially if you're revving it out. Now, if you're asking why did they change that, what was the point when they went from a two-piece rear main seal to a one-piece rear main seal, why didn't they just keep it internally balanced? What was the point of changing? Well, when it comes to production engines, when they're building millions a year, the cost can add up really, really quick. And doing an externally balanced crank is still very durable and very reliable even in performance engines, keep in mind when they came out with the Gen 2 LT1s in the 90s, they stuck with an external style rotating assembly. And that was a performance engine and it did great. So they realized it wasn't so detrimental to stay internal balanced, which is kind of more of a performance thing. And they decided to go with the two piece, or I'm sorry, external balance flex plate, sorry to confuse you, to keep that production cost low. It's quicker and easier to balance these assemblies like that. So if you're wondering, that's why they went that direction. And of course, there are some custom applications. We have had customers that have internally balanced a external balanced assembly, but that's very custom. We can get you those parts, but most of the time that isn't, isn't really necessary. Once again, thank you so much for coming by for one of our weekly tech videos. I really hope I was able to maybe put some confusion to bed, you know, answer some of the questions when you're going from one engine to another and you're combining parts, you're wondering why stuff's not lining up, or hopefully you haven't, but maybe if you put on the wrong balancer and you got a real nasty vibration after idle, I hope I was able to answer some of these questions and get some of this stuff right. If you have any further questions, maybe I didn't explain this as, as well as you had hoped and you're still slightly confused, don't worry about it give us a call here at SD Parts. Go to our website at sdparts.com where we sell parts like this and as well as many others aftermarket. And give us a like, subscribe, and share on both YouTube and Facebook. We're trying to spread around this information as much as possible, whether it's the basics or building crazy crate engines or real technical stuff with the new LS and LT engines. We're trying to share as much as we can to help hot rodders like you and me and, of course, our customers. I will see you guys next week for another tech video. Thank you for stopping by.